lot of folks are very well interested, you know, very well into soil analysis for many years, specifically if you're an agronomist or crop advisor or crop consultant that's listening to the webinar today. And I, you know, I personally had a number of different experiences over the years with a variety of soil analysis methods and protocols that led me to some extraordinarily positive outcomes and some less than desirable outcomes as well. And so what I will say is that over the years, I tried almost as many different types of soil analysis as I could find and tried to sort through what was the best way to, you know, enrich a specific soil in, you know, a high desert environment or in a little bit more of a maritime climate. And what I realized is each different soil environment has strengths and weaknesses. Each different soil analysis method and protocol also has strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes the strengths and weaknesses match up and sometimes they don't. And when they don't match up, they can read your, your crop put recommendations or your applications into places extremely inefficient, almost to the point of negative efficiency and so on. And so this led to a long a journey, frankly, for myself of, you know, you know, sending multiple different soil analysis off to different labs, comparing the results, you know, looking at those year over year, you know, seeing how the crops performed. And ultimately what I realized is that each test, each soil analysis method type, right? Each soil test type has their own thing that they're really good at. And then there's a lot of things they're also not typically very good at, right? So for instance, like if you look at, you know, water extractable soil analysis, very good at saying what's available, but not really good at seeing what's going to be available in a month or six months or three months. Potentially. Conversely, you know, some of the more original type of soil methods, soil analysis methods, you know, Malik 1 and Malik 2, you know, they will tell you, you know, okay, yeah, this is what's in the soil and this is maybe what's going to be available if you're in a chemical analysis, uh, sorry, in a, in a chemical paradigm, right? So a chemical crop a paradigm, right? Similarly, if you go to more of a softer acid, something like a Morgan analysis or a Malik 3 analysis, you'll realize that, you know, they're going to be good for specific things. You know, Malik 3 would be good for cation exchange balancing or a Morgan analysis might be extremely good for, for, for P and K availability analysis and comparing that to crop input needs. So but ultimately, all of these analysis methods are valid and they have their place, right? And so it's up to you to start to understand where do you want to use one? Where do you want to use another? We get a lot of people coming in saying, well, you, you know, our, our apical soil solution analysis, like we developed that, you know, five years ago to, to mimic field conditions, right? That's all it was meant to do was, was mimic field lysimeter collection under field conditions. Because what we found was that that was an extremely correlative data set to what growers find in plant soil and, or sorry, plant leaves tissue and leaf sap analysis. And we verified that, you know, over the last five years, you know, ad infinitum with our growers. But when you want to take a, a new field, right, you're starting to work with that as a consultant, or, you know, if you're buying land or something like that, and you, you've got land history, you know, you're going to want to look at multiple different ways of analyzing your soil in order to understand, you know, how do you get the most out of it on an annual basis? How do you look at a five-year sort of crop or soil and that soil enrichment program for, for that sort particular soil. And then also like, you know, maybe what's been done in the past, right? So with some of these really strong acid analysis, the last I'll say is, you know, some of the more broad scale, non-invasive spectral analysis is, you know, there's some really interesting things happening there right now, but you know, again, like I said, each one of these soil analysis methods has their own limitation. The other thing I also, you know, see a lot of is. You know, the growers that are really looking at, you know, biological analysis or regenerative organic soil methods and protocols, you know, oftentimes they're using software chemistries, not just for crop inputs, but also software chemistries for analysis protocols, because they're, they're a lot more precise 
on what's going to be available to the plant and how easily that's entering into the vascular system and how to make use of that and tie things up. And, and what I'll say is, you know, the more growers engage in soft, softer type of analysis methods and protocols, oftentimes it leads them away from large, large applications and inputs. Because one of the things we've, we've experienced as a company over the years is when you dial back your your water and or your soil analysis on a, on a minute to minute basis. You're able to make more real time decisions instead of saying, "All right, well, you know, we're going to take one one time a year acid analysis, you know, run out our our applications based on that acid analysis, and then you know we'll run maybe a, you know a standardized crop program on top of that." Well, what we saw was when when we did things like that with sap analysis, there was significant, you know, disparity between what the analysis was saying and what the what the growers thought they were going to get from the result and that was you know unfortunate for sure us because you know we 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 want to help our growers but oftentimes the growers would get discouraged when they see you know the same problems over and over on a sap test and wonder where they're coming from and what i'll say is this is a lot of times there's a blind spot that created by using any one of these soil analysis methods without another frame of reference, right? Okay, so, you know, one of our things that we're typically known for, obviously, is comparison sampling, right? New leaf to old leaf, deep soil to shallow soil, you know, one extraction method of soil to another. You know, there's a lot of information on our website about how to select soil analysis methods. You know, whether you use our lab or not, we, we do feel that that, we, that it's our responsibility to help educate growers specifically because maybe they haven't experienced that before, that there are different soil analysis methods. Each one is, is going to be slightly different from another and more applicable to your soil analysis or not. So when you start to look at your plant analysis instead of soil analysis, you're going to have a similar scenario, right? So... You know, if you're going to do something like a drone analysis or a satellite analysis or a tissue analysis, right? They're going to be less precise typically than sap analysis, right? And there's a number of different reasons for that. You know, some of them are gone into on our website, but ultimately there's very good data still to be had from each one of these methods, right? And they have their place. So my point being is that, you know, myself as a consultant, I use all of these different methods. Right. And I think that for any one grower or any one consultant to zero in and only be one dimensional, you're going to miss the broader, the broader goals. You're going to miss insights. You're going to miss data sets and data points that, that can provide value to the grower. Carbon is king. Thanks again very much and look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care.